Hello everyone, I am Satya Sekar, a developer advocate with Salesforce. I'll show you how to get started with Apex in this quick tech. I'll show you how and where to write Apex code and execute it. First, let's see what is Apex. In simple words, Apex is an object-oriented, strongly typed, server-side programming language. It is an object-oriented programming language, which means if you already know any other programming languages like Java and C Sharp, the code looks familiar with a few Salesforce specific annotations and interfaces. It has well-defined data types and a simple syntax. You can use it to implement the server-side logic. You can use Apex to write, maintain, and test your custom logic on the Salesforce platform. If you are new to client-server technology, you can check introduction to the Salesforce platform video on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. You can build most of your application on Salesforce declaratively using point and click tools. You can use customization options such as the ability to define new fields, objects, forms, etc. Salesforce provides standard and custom objects to define model, page layouts, lighting pages, and screen flow to create user interfaces and it provides standard CRUD and flow automation out of the box. On the other hand, you can use Apex to implement advanced business logic. Unlike most programming languages, Apex is primarily used for transactions. Some of the distinct features of Apex are, it natively supports Salesforce object query language, which is similar to structure query language, but much simpler. You can use DML keywords like insert, update, etc. in your code and it is a case insensitive language which means you write code in small case capital case or camel case all are valid apex code typically contains programming elements that you might be familiar with in other programming languages it has variable declarations control structures collections etc salesforce also provides apex classes out of the box for the standard objects which you can use in your code here you can see we are creating variables of account type. Not just that, declarative actions such as defining objects and fields generate the Apex classes you can use in your code. Apex language has tight integration with the database. As I said earlier, you can use SQL queries and deserved DML keywords like insert, update, etc. in your Apex code. We'll look into these constructs and data types in another quick take covering Apex syntax and structure. You can find the link in the description below. Now it's time to write some code. As we do in most other programming languages, let's get started by writing hello world code. We can use Salesforce built-in editor by launching it from the setup menu. We can use developer console ID, which you can open through the quick access menu by clicking the setup gear icon on the top right. Or we can use the Salesforce extension pack on Visual Studio Code. Today, we'll write Apex code using VS Code Editor. I've already created an SFDX project and connected it to my org. If you are new to SFDX projects, you can check the quick start setting up the developer tools playlist on Salesforce Developers YouTube channel. The link is provided in the description below. Okay, let's now create a new Apex class. Click View Command Palette. You can also launch Command Palette using Command Shift P on Mac or Control Shift P on Windows. Let's type Create Apex class and select SFDX create apex class. Let's give a name hello world and select the desired directory. The default directory is force app slash main slash default slash classes. Let's select that. You can see that it has created a class structure. You can notice that this class has an access modifier public, which makes this apex code accessible. You can also see a keyword with sharing that enforces sharing rules of the current user. We'll talk more about it in another quick take covering Apex syntax and structure. Let's add a method say hi.
This method prints a debug message in the log. Let's save it. You can also use shortcut keys to save it. Control S on Windows and Command S on Mac. Let's deploy the code to the R before we run it. You can invoke this Apex code from other Apex classes, triggers, SOAP, REST, or even anonymously. Let's now see how we can run it anonymously using anonymous execution. You can write the anonymous Apex code in the scripts folder. You can find the scripts folder in the SFDX project. If not found, you can also create that manually. We can use the sample hello.apex file or you can create your own .apex file. The .apex files can be used to store the anonymous Apex code. You can choose to run a few lines of code using the command sfdx execute anonymous apex with currently selected text or you can execute the entire file with the command sfdx execute anonymous apex with editor contents here you can also see some sample apex code it has a variable named tempware that stores my name a debug message that prints hello world and a debug message that prints my name let's save it let's execute this code in command palette, let's type execute and select sfdx execute anonymous apex with editor contents. There you can see the execution log in the output tab below. Here you can see that it has printed hello world and also my name. Okay, let's now see how to invoke say hi method of our hello world class. Let's create a hello world object. You can also see that it shows the context sense to help while I write the code. And let's invoke the say hi method. This syntax might look familiar if you have ever worked with any of the object oriented programming languages. Let's select these two lines and execute. Here in the output tab, you can see that it has printed the log and you can also see that it has printed hello world debug statement. Also, you can note that you can select any statement in your apex.cls files and execute anonymously. Let's see what we can code with apex. You can write code that fires as a result of a database event like insert, update, etc., which is called trigger. You can write apex classes that hold server-side business logic. You can also write apex test classes. You can use apex to create web services and email services perform complex validations and business processes and much more. In this video, we covered what is Apex, how to write code in Apex, how to execute the code. To learn more, you can visit the Platform Developer Center on developer.salesforce.com. You can find Apex documentation and other useful Apex resources. You can also find the link to the Apex recipes which has Apex code samples implemented with best practices and patterns. Thanks for watching this quick tip. If you learned something, be sure to like this video. If you want to get more content like this pushed to you directly, click subscribe and the bell icon to get notifications.